Um, so today we are so excited to have Takahiro Inada. He's a PhD student at Kyoto University going on the job market this year. Um, and he's presenting work that's co-authored with Koki Okumura, who's a PhD student at UCLA. And uh, our discussant today is Gaetan de Rosanfos. He's going to have 10 minutes to discuss following Takahiro's 25 minute presentation. And then we open up for um, Q&A. If you have a clarifying question during Takahiro's talk, please um, type it into chat and I will ask on your behalf. During Q&A, um, please feel free to raise your hand and ask your question um, directly or type it into chat, whichever you're more comfortable with. Um, okay, uh, here we go. Takahiro, the floor is yours. Yeah. Um, Professor, thank you for um, inviting me. So I'm going to share my screen. Yes. Okay. So um, everyone, um, thank you for coming to my session. So my this title is about um, knowledge transfer and the rise of superstar farms. Um, and we conducted a panel analysis of patent citation relationships. And um, my background is um, about um, management, and also my co-author Koki is um, his background is economics. So it's um, how to say it's interdisciplinary um, research. So yeah. So let's go ahead. So this is um summary of our research. So the tendency of knowledge transfer can explain the widening difference among farms. It, it is our um. So we, we supposed to say um, through this 25 minutes presentation. So, um, so the fact is um, the rise of superstar farms. So I explain what is superstar farms, but um, superstar farms is in the rise um, recently. And so we find knowledge transfer from following farms to leading farms are significant these days. So we think. Uh, the rise of superstar funds can be explained by the knowledge transfer pattern that is changing these days. And um, we also find farms that acquire knowledge from smaller farms tend to grow faster. And especially knowledge transfer across industries are important, we uh, assume. So um, these results required us to construct a new model like um, to explain the company growth and also how company can achieve sustained competitive advantage. So um, I move on to the theoretical background. So I say the rise of superstar farms. So the word superstar farms uh, means, this word means is a recent empirical studies have reported the increase, dramatic increase uh, of difference among farms in terms of sales and profit. And you can uh, find the right graph uh, that is showing the rise of superstar farms. So, and this is based on the US economic census data. And in manufacturing section, um, there is a what is it, CR4 or CR20. CR means a, a concentration ratio. and CR4 means uh, how to say in top four companies in one industry, it, it, it is a um, manufacturing sector. And so top four companies have this kind of uh, about 40% of revenue. They um, dominate this kind of um, position. So um, this is uh, this kind of uh, phenomena is happening uh, all over the world. So and um, so there is a discussion about the factor why this kind of uh, phenomena is happening. So the first one is uh, the use of ICT. ICT is um, information and communication technology, as you know. And maybe um, it is, uh, in other words, it's a digitalization or uh, this transformation or kind of things. And um, the second one, we, it's we, our focus is uh, knowledge transfer. 
so um so traditional model uh, or this uh, 2021 study is a model that uh, assume that uh, knowledge is transferred from leading farms to following farms and that uh, transfer narrows the uh, gap between companies like um, gaps in sales or profit and so in this 2021 study we use this model and explain why the superstar farms is rising so um, they explain uh, leading farms enclose their intellectual property and hinders a flow of knowledge so they um, include not not enclose uh, um, their how to say patent or technology or this these kind of things and so uh, they hinder the knowledge transfer uh, however uh, we hypothesize that Knowledge transfer from following farms to leading farms may become critical compared to the uh, knowledge flow from leading farms to um, following farms. So, um, I show some small figure, and the left hand side shows it's a before uh, knowledge transfer, like L is a leading and F is a following. So, um, knowledge is transferred from uh, leading farms to following farms. So, in other words, following farms acquire uh, leading farms knowledge. However, uh, we think uh, the situation is changing. So, um, now uh, it is shown the right hand side of the figure. And so, the knowledge transfer from uh, leading farms to following farms is also um, happening these days. However, um, Leading farms is also uh, actively uh, acquiring knowledge from following farms. So we think this bolded uh, arrow, uh, arrows, what is it? Arrow is explaining uh, what we would like to focus. So um, this kind of uh, hypothesis or assumption is um, can be true or um, because of the two. Um, changes in the world the it is a uh, open innovation and platform business so uh, number one open innovation is uh, as you know is the uh, concept by chesco and so in this uh, initiative uh, firms attempt to increase the uh, speed of innovation by acquiring knowledge from other farms so um it, now leading farms is really actively uh, trying to acquire your knowledge from other farms. It is including following farms. And also the second point is a platform business. So platform companies like Google or Facebook, and also like uh, Mindsphere is provided by Siemens, and also the mother is provided by Hitachi, Japan. And so platform companies can collect information from participants, like how to say Google search, uh, history or also the mother uh, can uh, gather information or data from uh, IoT, uh, how to say, construction machines. So we think uh, based on these two concepts and or theoretical concept, we think uh, knowledge transfer from following farms to leading farms is happening and becoming more and more essential. So our study aims to uh, clarify how the trend of tra knowledge transfer is changing these days. And also we try to examine its impact on farm skills. So this is a um, data and analysis section. So we use um, both two data. Uh, one is a uh, patent data. It's um, provided by IIT um, Japanese, um, how to say, in government institution provided uh, providing patent uh, citation relationship data so um, this contains 26 million um, relationships of Japanese farms so our uh, study is about Japanese farms and we can collect data after 1964 
and we use this pattern data and combine it to the Contestat data. It's, um, as you know, it's a really famous data about the financial um, performance of uh, listed firms, and we focused on Japanese listed firms. And, and yeah, this kind of um, industry code is used for the analysis. And so this is a um, description of our uh, data and especially citation relationships. So um, you can find the uh, right side data and um, the number of citations and also uh, number of citations in manufacturing sector. So uh, as you can see from the figure, so um, the number is really um, rapidly decreasing from 2015 and so we we cut uh, after 2015 data and we focus on 1990 to 2015 period, about 25 uh, years. And also, as you can see uh, from the uh, figure, the number of citations in manufacturing is uh, mostly um, is most in the total uh, number of citations. So we uh, analyze only manufacturing sector. And so um, about number of firms, um, number of firms in manufacturing is uh, in 1990, it's a number and maybe it's a bit stable, but about uh, 1,000 or uh, yeah, 1,500 or kind of things. So we, as, as I mentioned before, we focus on only listed firms. So the number is a bit small. And so I mentioned about the superstar farm, that is a, how to say, really um, high performing farms. So we uh, calculated the concentration ratio in manufacturing. So um, CR3 is, uh, I, I mentioned before CR4, and CR3 is uh, top three, uh, three largest farms of, uh, that, that have uh, market share. And so after, uh, 2000, the in concentration is ratio is increasing. So um, this kind of superstar farm is uh, is there in also in Japanese manufacturing farms. And so this trend is uh, is similar to the how to say the same kind of Japanese data analysis by DOI 2014. And so um, we move to the analysis of the citation relationships and also the knowledge transfer relationships. And so we first, we calculated citation from smaller farms and the, how to say, the equation is um, this kind of things and we calculated CS. And so the results show in the uh, graph. So as you can see, the uh, ratio is about more than 40% of total um, citation relationship. So um, how to say, citation from smaller farm is really um, has such a great number. So we have to more uh, consider about this uh, phenomena. And also we, it's kind of a really similar uh, question analysis, but we uh, also conducted by um, calculating citation by top farms from less farms. Uh, we call it a CTR. And um, the ratio is also increasing, like um, the increasing rate is um, more significant than uh, before this citation CS rate. And um, we calculate top farms is uh, about by um, revenue of sales uh, base. So we choose um, top 10% farms in manufacturing sector. Um, we call it the uh, top farms. And also other 90% of farms is uh, less farms we call. And so uh, um, the rate is also increasing. And so, so maybe you, question about what, what, what does it mean? So 
I, 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 you, you can understand the tendency of knowledge transfer is changing, but how it、um, means to the farm growth or economic growth. So we also、uh, analyze this impact of knowledge transfer patterns to the farm growth. So especially,、uh, we focus on the effect of citation from smaller farms on, on the revenue growth. Um, the revenue growth, as you can see on the equation, the revenue growth is a、um, fifth year growth. And so,、um, so the citation from smaller farm、uh, ratio is significantly positive effect on five year growth.、Um, so I go、um, by red、um, rectangle. So, so, so this,、um, The result shows the、uh, farms that site from actively site from smaller farms uh, grow uh, rap rapidly or grow more than other farms. And um, also, um, we conducted other analysis, other perspective analysis. And so, the effect of citation from smaller farms inside or outside the industry. On the revenue growth. So,、um, how to say, we don't,、uh, before this, this analysis, we don't care about which、um, farms or what, what farm is in the industry, but we、uh, analyze the,、um, the citation is happening in the inside、uh, industry or outside industry. And so we find the, also the significant pattern、uh, on the、uh, citation from smaller, from outside farms, like for example,、um, manufacturing farms, citing from chemi chemical industry or kind of that. And so, and other、um, de uh, dependent, uh, independent variable is not、um, significant. So, Um, we can、uh, conclude that、um, citation from smaller and smaller farm is important, and also it is more important、uh, it is happening、um, outside or across industry.、Um, knowledge transfer is、uh, also or more significant on the revenue growth. So、um, I move on to the discussion section. Um, I, we have two contributions to the previous literature. The first one,、uh, we reveal that the importance of knowledge transfer from following farms to leading farms on farm growth. So,、um, so previous literature, for example, we,、um, based on the previous literature in economics and also management. So we,、uh, also can contribute to these two domains. And first of all, um, Economics literature only consider the flow from leading farms to following farms, as I mentioned in the theoretical background section. So,、um, our knowledge transfer pattern is、uh, opposite direction. So,、uh, we find the,、um, this kind of opposite direction.、Um, knowledge transfer is increasing and also、uh, really becoming more and more important these days. And also,、um, management literature is also discussed about the knowledge transfer, knowledge diffusion phenomena. And yeah,、um, maybe you, you're familiar with the idea of exploration and exploitation、uh, by March. And then, so previous literature in management mostly examines the breadth and depth of knowledge、uh, that is transferred. However, we、uh, also added some perspective. Uh, that we have to, we should consider the,、uh, the sales gap or how to say, the relative、um, high or the leading farm or following farm. So we have to consider、uh, which kind of、uh, citation is happening. And so this is the second contribution. So we also.、Uh, Analyze the、uh, knowledge transfer across industries. And so, and especially、um, knowledge transfer from following 
advanced uh, to um how to say um leading firms. So um yeah it's a bit uh, old discussion but um Davini said um there is a hyper competition a situation is happening um and we think uh this is also happening these days recently and SGA sustained competitive advantage is becoming more difficult to achieve in this hyper competition situation. So um so our result implies a uh, leading firms that actively acquire knowledge from following firms and in addition uh, not only um how to say only um inside industries but across industries maybe they have to learn different knowledge from other industries uh that that kind of uh, firms can get competitive advantage so they our results show this uh, kind of active uh, acquire of knowledge across industries can uh, grow uh, really fast so um this result is related to the open innovation we um, use this concept in the theoretical section and so this is uh, our contribution and so we are thinking uh, future research so the first of all we need to construct a new model uh, because we have uh, previous reset so um, previous economic model uh, can't explain uh, we, we think can't explain uh, not not well uh, about the uh, link between knowledge transfer and farm growth especially we are focusing on the superstar farms it's a really um, high growth rate farms so we need to construct a new model to uh, based on our empirical evidence and so also we need to find out hub farms like platform companies so um, we can uh, explain or show the result that is supporting the open innovation is important but uh, we also said about platform companies is uh, related to the how to say um, dif differencing um, increasing um, or changing um, knowledge transfer patterns so we have to also find out hub farms that are at the center of the knowledge transfer so uh, maybe we can find like a kind of network analysis or kind of things of uh, patent citation relationship and um, we also uh, would like to explain the platform company's effect on the farm growth or how to say more macro level uh, growth of farms and economy economies yeah so this is our the end of our presentation and for thank you for listening and yeah please uh, we appreciate any comments and feedbacks awesome thank you so much takahiro um you. once you stop sharing gaitan can begin his discussion You see my screen? Yeah. Um, all right. Um, so thank you uh, very much uh, for the organizer, um, to the organizer for um, having me discussing this paper. And thank you, Takahiro, for, um, for the presentation. Um, I I'd like to, you know, to connect to your paper to some real debates that we have uh, in, in the policy circles, in the academic literature, and, and your paper actually is put on, on this issue. And indeed, the rise of superstar firms um, is an issue, right? It's an issue. Uh, you have shown how it has been, um, you have shown uh, the increase in concentration, which suggests, you know, which defines the superstar firms, but then we should worry and we should care about these superstar firms because there are some real uh, market phenomenon um, or real world implication, and among others, among the um, a shift in the um, the um, the retribution of capitals versus 
uh, I mean, physical capital versus labor capital. So more and more, these superstar firms are able to amass vast profits uh, and capital is being rewarded more and higher uh, than, 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 than labor, which of course, if the trends continue, will be a terrible issue. So we should care and we should really understand this, this issue from, uh, from a social welfare and a policy perspective. It's um, a very lively academic debate. There has been lots of research. You actually ground your paper very well in this literature. Um, and indeed, the rise of superstar firms has been explained by a variety of um, hypotheses, or sometimes more than hypotheses, um, have been found to be driven by a, a series of factors, technological innovation, MNAs, killer acquisitions, um, antitrust enforcement, and you bring a new argument to the table, which is what I call here the reverse knowledge transfer. And I say reverse because usually indeed, um, we believe that the laggards learn from the leader and you actually come up with the opposite argument, which is interesting. Um, so the paper is still an early draft. Um, so I think it's the perfect moment to receive feedback. Um, so I hope you will find this comment um, helpful. Um, I think comment number one, and I think it's super important in fact, it's to, to better align the theory with the empirical analysis. And, and I'll take your two main arguments, right? So the argument number one is about platforms. These platforms can be business to business or business to consumer. And that allow firms to collect information from, from participants. Information being um, preferences, user profiles, um, whatever, you know, which then can be marketed. Um, but here, I, and, and, and I understand this point, and this is true, right? But then I miss the connection with what we do later on in the empirical analysis. Um, so I miss the link with the knowledge transfer in pattern data. Okay, granted, we have these platforms. But then moving from, from this argument to, to the empirical analysis, you know, then I miss, I miss the connection. So I think you, you might be aware of it by, by saying in the conclusion that you would be looking at hubs. Uh, and, but looking at hubs or central nodes in, in a citation network as you do is not, uh, it's not a platform, right? Um, and so here again, I'm not sure that, that looking at the, uh, the structure of the, of the citation network will help you identify these um, this, this platforms, so to say. Um, and so I think that's an argument, that's a link. Um, you should work more on, on, on taking the argument with the empirical analysis. And the second argument is about open innovation, which uh, pushes firms to incorporate technologies from outside the company. I get that, of course, and that's a very important trend. We know it's happening. Um, so I see the link, but here I miss the argument as to why and what exactly uh, the leaders will learn from the laggards. So we have these old literature that says the laggards learn um, from the leaders. And of course they have superior technologies and that's presumably why they are leaders. But it's not clear what the leaders can learn uh, in, in, in your setup from the laggards. So I think you know, some more explanation on that would be helpful. Um, for instance, you could look at, are these patents cited from large to small? Are they science-based? You know, um, I mean, do they make more reference to, to the scientific literature? So, or are they more frontier uh, knowledge? Or, you know, we need to characterize the type of knowledge that the leaders learn from the laggards. Um, and maybe the story is all about only argument number two. Maybe argument number one indeed explains the rises of superstar firm, but does not apply to your context. So you can maybe it's, it might be easier to just drop this argument and then focus on, on the type of knowledge that they truly learn, uh, which is related to argument number two. Next, um, next comment, and again on aligning theory with the analysis is somehow in the paper you talk about productive and productive laggard leaders, which I get. But then you move on in the empirical analysis to small and large. Uh, but large can be extremely unproductive firms uh, and, and somehow laggards in that sense. And so here, so now you equate everything. Productive is equal to leader is equal to large. And to me, that's, that's a big stretch. Um, I think the analysis would be much more credible if you were able to compute the, um, the productivity level of these firms. You know, and see who learns from the most productive firms. So do we have a high productive firm that, low, that learns from a low productive firm? 
because presumably, you know, when we talk about um, industry concentration, we think of um, Amazon, Google, I mean, the GAFAM, and they are extremely productive firms because they have very little um, physical capital, right? So that makes them very, very productive. Um, so I think, you know, you have compute set data, so you can derive some measures of productivity. And I think of instead of using a simple um, small versus large economy, you should have, you know, most productive versus least productive. And do, do you see learning from, from the other? Uh, I mean, from, from between these two groups. Um, and I encourage you, and that is related to, 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 to the first comment, but also to this comment, to be much more explicit about the exact mechanisms that drive productivity growth. Um, so what exactly do they learn? And can you show in the data that indeed it is this type of knowledge that they have acquired? As I said, maybe science-based, maybe more novel patterns, maybe whatever, you know, but, but something that, um, that you can document in your data. Um, next, I have a couple of comments on the regression model, which at the moment is very parsimonious. And I like, uh, you know, simple reduced form models uh, because they're easy to understand. Uh, but nevertheless, I think they should come with um, a very careful um, reflection of all the potential limitations and threats to endogeneity. Uh, so bias of your estimated coefficient and address them. Um, the most important element might be here that I could think of, but I'm sure there are lots of others. Um, maybe industry specific trends might be driving the results. And so it would be, so you control for firm fixed effect and time fixed effect. But in fact, I think you should have industry um, specific trends, time trends, um, and play more with the robustness or, of, of your analysis. How sensitive are your results to this time window that you use? Um, how about the clustering of standard errors? How did you, so I, I miss a lot of details, in fact, in the empirical analysis. Um, so in general, I'd introduce your model, think of what could go wrong with your model and with respect to your story and then show and, and, and reassure the reader that it's not happening. Because I, I, at the moment I have, you know, because if it's, it's very parsimonious, uh, I have, you know, difficulty in believing the results because it's not there yet, um, but I'm sure, I'm sure um, you can make it work. Um, I have another comment on the, comp the sample, the composition of the sample. Um, by definition, observing market concentration or computing market concentration requires to observe all participants on the market. But here you only observe listed firms. Um, it could be a problem. And of course, it's an easy comment because you, I mean, you, you, you are with data that you have. Uh, so if you can get more data, perfect, go and do it. So the paper that you showed on uh, the statistics that you show on David Otter and, and colleagues actually use data from the US Census Bureau. So that's the universe of firms in the US. Can you get such data in, in Japan? Um, if not, which most likely might be the case, um, at least in your data, you observe the universe of patent citation, right? And so if so you have the universe of citations, you don't have the universe of firms, but at least you could see how the out of sample citation patterns behave. You know, do you observe, you know, different rate of citations or different flows, you know, when you look at citations outside your sample? Uh, and so that could already tell us something about um, the representativeness of your, um, of your sample. Uh, but at the minimum, indeed, you should discuss uh, the issue of, of the sample composition. And here it's an issue because we're talking about industry concentration, right? Um, that was about it. So um, I wish you best of luck uh, for, for revising and working on the paper. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Talk, is there anything you or Koki wanted to say or do you wanna open up for questions? What do you wanna do next? Yeah, um, I think um, Koki can add to the section sure. about um, how to say that productiveness and also the small and large things. Yeah. Um, yes. In, in standard economic model, um, small, small uh, so high, high productive farm tend to be bigger in standard model, but yeah, as you say, Gita. We, we can compute productivity of farms using 
the data in CompuStat. So I think we should compute productivity. Yeah, thank, thank you for your comment. And, and, and the, reason, the reason it might be interesting to compute productivity is that you might not be learning as a large firm, you might not be learning from a small firm, but you might be learning for a very high productive firm. Mm. So say uh, an SME that has a very superior production technology, mm. which is therefore very, very productive. Um, and so that will shed you know, a, a new light on, on your um, data, I believe. Thank you. Yeah, that was a point that also really stood out to me um, that this was really about leaders and followers, but you were doing small and large. And given like the dynamics, it's, I mean, you're focused on dynamics and it might just be that those small firms are about to become huge, you know, um, so it's not clear that just because they're small, they're laggards. So I think that's uh, a really important point. Yeah. Okay, we have... Um, do we have questions from the audience? You can raise your hand or just start talking or whatever you prefer. Nothing, nothing yet. Maybe it would be useful. Um, I also was pretty unclear on, on what your estimating model looked like. I wonder if you could take some time to tell us um, what what you're estimating on why you think your your main coefficient estimates could be interpreted as effects and not correlations i um i guess related to gaton's question about transparency around the empirics yeah thank you for your question you um sorry you mean this this section yeah so maybe it's also um, econom about the economic model is better for Koki. <laughs> he can explain. <laughs> sure, so, sounds good. <laughs> so I explained this uh, regression. Okay. So this regression means that uh, the dependent variable is the growth rate of the revenue of each firm and explanatory variable is the uh, uh, ratio that the citation from smaller, smaller firm over all citations, all of the citation that that firm cite. So this regression means that um, small, uh, the firm which cite from smaller firm tends to grow after five years. Oh, yeah. Exactly. yeah. And so you have um, firm fixed effects, is that right? Yeah, th there is firm fixed effect and time fixed effect. Okay, so all of a sudden the firm starts citing technologies from smaller firms and then they start growing. Is that the yeah. interpretation? Yeah. Okay. Exactly right, right. And potential threat, as Gaetan might have suggested with industry trends, is something changes mm -hmm. in the industry that mm -hmm. drives that both that citation and that growth like mm -hmm. a new basic technology is discovered or a new scientific mm -hmm. discovery comes yeah. out and yeah. so they would have grown anyways mm -hmm. so i think that was the the point yeah. there and that does seem to me like the big confounding concern mm -hmm. yeah i think that's very good comment yeah, I mean, the second result that you, you find this really with technologies outside the industry is kind of nice and maybe suggests that's not what's happening um, to the extent that it's really being driven by discoveries that aren't within the industry. But if every other firm in the industry is also um, citing this, it might be that there is a discovery outside of the industry that's driving new trends in the industry. So it still seems like it could be a concern. Mm. But this, I think this result is really nice. Um, but yeah, I think to Gaetan's point, going like step by step through why you're controlling for what you're controlling for and what threats remain would be useful. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, we have a question from Desiree. Yes, thank you. 
Yeah, thank you for your, your work and your presentation. And uh, yeah, very nice, because it brings a new perspective of uh, how we can see knowledge transfer. Um, I want to elaborate a little bit more on the observation of uh, your discussion about which type of knowledge firms acquire from, from each other. So th I think this is very important. And uh, if you could really try to solve this problem, it would be very nice and it'd be good paper. Um, for me, I can make some suggestion um, is uh, to see, because uh, if you can zoom again your, your model, uh, how did you measure this citation from small firms or from firms? Is it the number of citation? Oh, yeah. Because uh, if uh, it is the number, how could we, uh, how could you make some differentiation? Um, you can see the distribution to see the distribution. Okay, so this is the distribution. So, um, yeah, um, yeah. So I think mm -hmm. yes. So I think we, you can draw some things uh, from the distribution to see if, because here we can see that it's not that uh, uh, linear. It's not linear. So uh, this means that. Uh, uh, there are some type of knowledge that our firms are, uh, are looking for, mm -hmm. that yeah. uh, big firms are looking for small firms. And when they try to go further, you know, when they try to go further, uh, trying to have more knowledge uh, or to transfer knowledge from, from small firms, then it starts decreasing, so you see. So I think you can play with the, 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 your, this variable and to see if mm -hmm. there is a certain number of citation that, I mean, from citation from small firms that are really important. And uh, from after that the number, then it starts decreasing. And if this is mm -hmm. the case, this is suggesting that they are looking for maybe some very specific type of knowledge, uh, not just from uh, any type of knowledge. So very specific type of knowledge. Yeah. So if, if the data cannot tell that story, you can try yeah. to see um, yeah, how this can be solved. And I think you have to make a good discussion uh, between uh, these uh, findings with the literature focusing on, focus on uh, bread uh, and death. So bread and death, so the, the story behind bread and death is that the same, for example. So the death is uh, how are you looking for something very important for you? And mm -hmm. if the effect of death is very important, this means that uh, you are very focused on something. But bread, this means that you are uh, putting together several things and uh, you find your way in looking at several things. So I think you have to make some good discussion about this data and uh, the literature on bread and death. And if you can do that, I think this can help to solve a little bit the problem. Uh, if you don't have any additional data, then it's fine. You can see how to do it. But if you can have additional data, it's really mm -hmm. important because this will make a clear link uh, be, be, between your contribution and the literature uh, on a recent study about uh, bread and death. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I agree with your idea that um, specific knowledge is important and not, not general one and for that company. And also, then this is uh, your point is related to Gitan's point one. Why? productive firms uh, need to gather less productive firms. They, they are productive because they have really good technology or any other knowledge. So uh, maybe we have to, how to say, the category of knowledge or maybe um, good leading companies have type A knowledge, but they are not good at type B knowledge. And also um, like SMEs have some type B knowledge. So um, they can learn type B knowledge from um, other com companies. So um, I yeah. think. Yeah, exactly. I, I can give just an example. Eh? You see yeah, yeah. you see that uh, uh, big firms, they are very uh, well uh, skilled in technology, uh, yeah, knowledge yeah. and so on. But yeah, yeah. in order to succeed in the market, you also need to have good knowledge about customers. Mm -hmm. You have yeah. to know how the market is, uh, I mean, what we call need knowledge. So mm -hmm. you see, Technological knowledge, but need knowledge. Need knowledge meaning that 
You have to know the, the need of your customers. You have to know the need of your, uh, of your competitors as well. So you have to know the need of uh, the markets, the market. And so maybe this type of knowledge, they don't have it. They have the technology, but they don't have how to, 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 uh, to, to reach what the customer are looking for. And maybe this is how they, I mean, this is the type of knowledge that they try to find uh, 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 looking at uh, other uh, small firms, which are very good maybe in that type of knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you for the comment. You're welcome. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, that was really useful. It looks like Danny Kim has a question. Yeah, so thank you uh, to the presenters and the discussant for a really interesting set of ideas here. Um, I was wondering if you go a little deeper in looking at the individual level or even inventor level data here, just to get a sense of what's uh, going on at a more micro level. So one possibility might be that these bigger firms are able to poach inventors from smaller firms, and then these people would then kind of cite their own prior art and that will kind of give you the knowledge flows as well. So like, do you have a sense of whether there is a big change in the mobility of these inventors from small firms to, to large firms? Um, you, you mean, how to say? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So I, 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 don't, I don't find the good answer to your question, but yeah, I, I know your point is really, um, critical, but um, okay, do you have any idea? <laughs> no, <laughs> sorry, uh, internet connection was bad, so I, I couldn't hear your comment. So, sorry, I don't know if my connection is bad or my audio is bad, but I was just wondering about um, basically inventors from these smaller firms moving over to the big firms, right? And then oh, well, right, that, that will be the, the antecedent for these investors and kind of cite their own prior stuff, which see, look I like see. citations, right? Yeah, yeah, I can understand. Yeah, so we didn't analyze this kind of, how to say, inventor mobility or transfer, inventor transfer effect. So, yeah, we, we can't uh, exactly answer what, what your uh, concern is happening or not in our data set. Yeah, so yeah, we have to learn more about the, this kind of issue. But um, yeah, yeah, so I don't know, but um, when, how to say, big company acquire a small company, this kind of uh, thing is happening. But um, yeah, so we more like use as a data like in Monday or this kind of data. So yeah, so this is, um, yeah, your point is, uh, is really another important point. Yeah, yeah, thank you for your comment. Awesome. Okay, it looks like we don't have any more questions. Um, so we'll leave it there. Thank you so much, Takahiro and Gaetan, um, that was wonderful. And thank you everyone for a great discussion. Since we have um, you know, a few minutes, I'm gonna plug uh, a workshop that I'm hosting with Elena Colchina at the SMS meeting this year. It's in particular for students and uh, PhD students and early stage researchers um, to try to help them define their research agenda going forward. We have a great panel, um, Marianne Feldman, Alfonso Gambardella, Martin Genko, um, Alexandra Kaspersik, Matt Marks, Olaf Sorensen. If you're interested in participating in this um, seminar, I'm gonna drop the um, application link. Please submit your CV and apply um, and we'd love to have you. Um, and our next uh, meeting for this series is in two weeks and we hope to see you there.